I want to ask you a question. If you think of the best driver of the golf ball in the world at the moment, I would imagine the name of Rory McIlroy or Brooks Kepka springs into mind. And there's three things these guys do each time with the driver that make them the best drivers of the golf ball. So in today's lesson, we're gonna find out how they do it. So I would imagine we all obviously have a driver, probably, some people don't, I know that. But when we get it out, it's one club that if we do hit it great, it's a great feeling. You're smashing it down the fairways and we always want that little bit more from it. And one of the big things I see from my lessons when they come to see me down at Trafford Golf Centre is, sometimes they've not got all the right ingredients to get the most out of their driver. So if we can do these three things today that I'm gonna talk you through, hopefully we should see that we're starting to get better drives. And it's things that we can all do. We don't have to be like Brooks Kepka. Obviously, he's a phenomenal athlete, absolutely ripped and does amazing things with the golf club, just like Rory McIlroy. But us as everyday average golfers, if we can put these three ingredients into play, we should be able to see that we are driving it better. So, point number one, to get the most out of your driver and a must do with driver. When we think of Brooks and we think of Rory, and you know, most people on PGA Tour, LPGA Tour, whatever it is, European Tour, when we watch them, when we see them actually standing to a drive now, if I just peg this one up here, no one ever looks like they can't be bothered to hit it. They always look the most athletic version of themselves. They look really tall, they look really powerful, and they just look like they're gonna get ready to launch it over 300 yards. As where well, if we went to the Saturday medal tee and saw some people, I bet we'd see a few of these where it'd be very crouched, very tight, and not looking like we even almost want to hit the driver because we're scared of where it's gonna go. So we just get a little bit crowded in ourselves and we don't make the most out of our frames. So tip number one that we have to make sure that we're doing, obviously there's limits in everyone's flexibility and everyone's stature and size, but if we can actually stand to the golf ball and look like we're gonna get ready to hit it, look like we're making the most out of our frame, build a big athletic setup, we're actually gonna give ourselves a better chance now of creating a great golf swing and actually give ourselves the platform to get a good strike and a good drive away down the fairway. So for me, a couple of those things would be, A, if I just turn onto you here, let's see that we've got a good width. Now, a lot of people think of shoulder width when they stand to a driver. And what they tend to do is get the outsides of the shoes looking round about shoulders. As well, if I were to just take my club now and place it on my lead shoulder and then my trail shoulder and measure it to how far they are, we can see it's about two feet wide there. And what I want to see is that my insoles, the inside of my shoes, are now going to be placed at that nice width there. So as we see here, I've now got the insoles of my shoes looking up to that shoulder width. I've already built a great platform for me to get into a nice balanced setup, which is my next point of this setup tip. We want to see that we're actually planted into the ground. If we think of someone like a Kepka who's launching it 300 yards through the air, when you see him in the gym, a lot of what he has in his setup for the gym for lifting weights is very much what he has in his setup for his driver. So if we think of, you know, a, a weightlifter at the Olympics, we wouldn't see them here ready to shoulder press something up. We'd see them making the most of the frame and getting ready to snatch it up. So once we've actually taken this setup where we're nice shoulder width apart now, we wanna see that we're planted into the ground. We don't wanna be leaning too much into the toes or too much back out of the heels because as soon as we swing the club, that's going to drag us out of balance and the chance of us getting a good strike is now very, very limited. Another thing we need to do is make sure that we get a little bit of tilt. So we wanna see that our lead shoulder is now actually pointing up to the sky there a little bit. As you see the club head here now, it raises up towards the sky. I've not got it level like I would be doing an iron. And one of the big things as well when we take our setup with a driver, because we have the ball 
in our lead foot here, just in line with my lead heel. The big thing is now, as you might be able to see there, as I come to grip, my shoulders actually go a little bit open because my right hand's got to go further up towards the target. It pulled my shoulder out in front of me. And if you are a slicer, that's a big thing to check. See that your shoulders aren't really open. So once we've created the platform and we've got the ball in the right space, we then want to make sure that we're not stood with our shoulders too open. We want to see that we've got them square to target or parallel to target with the lead shoulder looking up now. And a great way to get that feeling is just to place your hand on your trail side. It'll be halfway up your, uh, your thigh here. And then what we want to try and do is just slide it down to the top of the kneecap. And as I do this, we see that this driver head now is just lifting up a little bit there. So as I stand actually to this now, we can see that I've got a great setup. I actually look powerful as opposed to the one from here. Go on, I'll give it a hit down the middle. I've got nice wide platform. I feel really balanced. And I feel that I'm gonna launch this up into the air from here now. So that is tip number one, guys. Make sure you are stood to the ball with intention to make a good athletic golf swing. Get those points in place, a nice, solid, powerful base a good tilt upwards, and then we're on to tip two from there. Now, it's hard to believe, yes, I know, this is dry shampoo and it is mine. It's not for my hair because I don't have any. The great thing with dry shampoo, if we were to just put a coating on the face of the driver here, what we're able to do is actually get the strike location. And you've probably seen some videos talking about T height and one of your, you know, one of the things that you might hear when you're playing in your Saturday four ball or your weekly four ball is, oh, with the driver, always peg the ball up above the face. Make sure half of the ball's up above the face. Now, it's a pretty good rule of thumb, but like I said earlier, we're all a little bit different in shapes and size and also golf swings. Some of us might hit down on it more than the others. Some of us might hit up on it more than the others. So we might be someone, for instance, who hits down on the golf ball a little bit. We see that as we're coming in, the club is having a descending angle. It might only be one or two degrees, but we're starting to see that as you do that, the strike would be a little bit higher up the face. So depending on your driver and how you swing it, if I just hit one off here now, we actually need to know where the strike location is on our driver to get the correct peg height. Because if you're someone who does hit down on it ever so slightly and you're pegging it up quite high, you might be skying the driver, you might be getting it too much out of the face, you might even have those little scratches on the top of the club face now where you've actually gone underneath the ball. It isn't to say that just because you heard it in your four ball that you have to peg it up half of the ball above the club face. We need to actually find out where your strike is predominantly. So for me, let's have a look. Good setup. See that I'm launching it. Not bad, a little bit toey, I reckon. Yeah, ever so slightly out of the toe here for me. I'll just show you that one there. So as we can see, a little bit out of the toe, but pretty high in terms of the equator of the golf club. It's actually just got a little bit above the center. So if I were to tee that any higher for me than I did then, I would have probably skied that driver. It would have got too high out of the face and I wouldn't have got my desired flight. It would have popped up and it wouldn't have gone as far. Again, it might be someone, you might be someone who's really, really getting it quite low out of the face. You might see that the ball mark here, once you've actually put it on, is just below the equator of the, um, the driver. So what we'd need to do then is make sure that you're actually pegging it up a little bit higher. So when you do come in to swing it, you would get the good strike location. Ideally, we want to see that it is just a little bit more above the middle of the driver, above that equator line of the driver. We want to see it just up above center and obviously as close to center as we do. So checking your strike location is a big thing because from there, if you are as well, constantly healing it or constantly towing it, it can tell you how close 
or how far away you need to move to the golf ball. If you were someone who did this exercise, sprayed the driver face and got something where you hit 10 drives and they all felt like good swings and they were all pretty close together out of the heel, you just need to move back half an inch so that you get it more out the center. Vice versa, if you're getting it out of the toe all the time, move in a tiny, tiny little bit and see that you get it more out of the center. So that's tip number two. Get some hairspray or some foot spray and find out where your strike location is. You can then decide the correct T height for yourself and you can also see if you stood close enough or far away enough to get that centered strike and we can work on getting good balance and get it more out of the middle each time. Okay, so third and final tip. As we hit a driver, one of the things I'd see a lot of from people when they come into the lesson, I'm going to smash this. I'm going to hit this as far as possible. I don't really have that much control over it, but God am I going to give it a leather in. I am going to absolutely take the skin off this one. I'm going to smash it. I'm going to swing it as hard as I can, as long as I can, and get it as far as I can. And what I tend to see from there as people do this, again, when we go back to looking at the likes of Brooks and Rory, I don't think there will be a drive that any of us have ever watched, I can't certainly picture one, where I thought, he looks really out of control there. Oh my God, did you see him? He fell off his balance. As he finished his golf swing, he was dancing all around and not actually getting anywhere near to looking like a good controlled golf swing. Like I say, it is a bit of the bravado thing that comes out with us. We get the big headed club, the long club, all of a sudden we now gain an extra foot on the golf swing where I can see the club out of my actual eye, out my uh, lead eye here, I can see out the corner of my eye. And all of a sudden, I'm actually swinging faster, I'm out of balance, and the chances of me actually getting a good strike and getting the ball down the fairway are very limited from there. There's those times where you might do it one out of 10. The rest of them are gonna be here, there and everywhere. So when you are getting your driver out, if you're someone who's struggling with it at the moment, let's see that we actually gain a little bit of control. So I want you to try and swing within yourself with your driver. Obviously, we need speed to get more distance and we'll build up to hitting it. But what we need to do is have a controlled driver swing as a must do. So well, I want to see that it's not longer than normal. I want you to try and feel that you almost stop a little bit three quarters and gain a bit of control and then swing and see if you can hold your finish until that ball has almost touched the ground. We've got to see that we are balanced and controlled. We don't want to be out of control as we swing it. So we've got three tips there, guys, that are gonna help us hit better drivers. We've got number one, build the correct setup. Let's look as athletic as possible and look like we're actually giving it some intent to launch it down the fairway. Number two, find out where we're striking it. I was a little bit toey on that last one, so I'm gonna stand in ever so slightly closer there. Then I've got the T at the right height because I know where my strike is. Then number three, I'm going to swing into a controlled balance finish, not over swing and try and kill it and watch it until it comes down. Little draw down the left hand side, nice and balanced, moved in slightly and it's the perfect strike there. A little bit higher, a little bit more out of the center, all because I knew from a hairspray. So, three must do's with your driver. If you can do those things, we should start to see that you are hitting your driver better. Guys, I hope this video has helped you out. I hope you're gonna start hitting those drivers better. Do leave a comment down below if there's, you, if there's anything that you think also is a good tip for your driver to help us all learn together. Thanks for watching this lesson. Do hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more future lessons. And if you do wanna come and see me at Trafford Golf Center, all the information's linked below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next lesson.